The effects of extreme drought in southeastern freshwater ecosystems is primarily the loss of habitat for essential species that provide ecosystem services, as well as the loss of recreational capacity. Reservoirs declined le levels in 1998 to 2002, and again in 2006 and 2008. As a consequence of the cumulative effects of, of these droughts, the lake level change reduced habitat complexity and eliminated refuge areas for small fish from larger predatory fish, as well as restricting the recreational access to the reservoir. This is important and not only as a loss of water storage, but because of the effects on the economy in terms of loss of recreational uses for fishing and boating. Indeed, Lake Lanier then dropped more than 17 feet below normal in 2007. This drop in level was a consequence not only of the two recent droughts, but also of the Corps of Engineers releasing waters for environmental flows to protect endangered species of freshwater mussels in the Apalachicola River. The consequences then in, in terms of environment and economic loss to these droughts and to uh, maintaining environmental flows continues to be an important issue in the region. We have then an uh, opportunity to look back at these levels and say, how can we respond in the future to more frequent and prolonged droughts? How can we learn from others and how can we learn from our experiences in terms of better managing these reservoirs? The consequences then of lake level declines become critical from a number of issues and it does become complicated both in terms of the economics, the ecology, and the politics. Georgia legislature established water planning in 2000, and by January 2008, water, water districts were identified as part of the statewide plan. Regional councils were assembled in our meeting and are examining watershed by watershed aspects to determine what kind of additional data are needed to plan for the future. These responses then are comprehensive and just beginning. One study by American River suggested that the Metro Atlanta could save between $300 and $700 million by pursuing increased water efficiency. Total water saved is more than an entire Lake Lanier, which provides 178 million gallons per day to Metro Atlanta. This then would be a major way to provide more new water. Water savings could provide sufficient water for up to 790,000, perhaps over a million new residents to the metro area, according to this study. Metro Atlanta then could eliminate the need for four of its planned reservoirs, which are expected to total 98 million gallons per day, two times over. So if this study is correct, efficiency and water savings can be an important part of the equation. Individuals have been able to reduce their water use by 20 to 30 percent in most counties in the last drought. By installing high efficiency toilets, individual households can save up to 16,500 gallons of water each year. These individual decisions then become a big part of the overall solution for the state and for the region. Yet we continue to have intrastate and interstate uh, conflicts in terms of resolution of allocation of scarce water during drought periods. And this continues into uh, a whole series of debates regarding the use of water for irrigation for agriculture. Farmers lost more than $1.3 billion in 2007 as a consequence of the drought. Uh, and indeed, uh, small storage reservoirs dried up, uh, eliminating storage that was required for raising livestock and for other uses. Though throughout the state, it's been important to consider other sources of water, such as here in this map, the blue indicates 15,600 wells in the green 16,700 pumps, which are primarily clustered in southwest Georgia where the aquifer uh, is uh, in the limestone area and able to provide a considerable amount of water from the Florida aquifer. This area then is under intensive study and in, in 2006 a conservation plan was developed to identify areas that were exceeding capacity and those uh, areas then had limited uh, permits or no new withdrawals uh, from the groundwater. This then is one example of better planning to try to sustain the groundwater supplies that are going to be essential. Another example is the Flint River Drought Protection Act, which started in 2001 and has been used several times to compensate farmers not to use the water that they have permits for and not to grow crops during drought years. 
This then is through a bidding process that the state conducts in order to allow for more groundwater to flow into the Flint River and thus protect species living in that reach. So this is one example of a concentrated effort to try to bring together agricultural needs as well as needs for endangered species. The public still considers the need to build more reservoirs, but the questions are where, what size, what type, what cost, and who will pay for them. Environmental resistance to building more dams in general has led to a decline nationwide in terms of the numbers of large dams here indicated in the red line on this graph shows that after 1960, the number of new dams, both large, small, and medium, leveled off. The map on the right indicates in red the Corps of Engineers dams along the Chattahoochee River. The yellow ones are ones for power production and the orange for municipal uh, water uses. So uh, we already have a large number of dams on the Chattahoochee, fewer uh, on the Flint. These maps then show on the left the federally owned reservoirs, again on the Chattahoochee, showing a series of five major reservoirs. The one on the right shows the state reservoirs, and here these two maps indicate the public utilities as well as privately owned. And you can see that indeed on the privately owned ones, most of them are small, most of them are concentrated in the north, where there's not adequate groundwater. So surface water storage has always been important in the state, and it's uh, estimated Amber Ignatius, that we have over 25,000 uh, reservoirs in the state uh, throughout this region then. In the uh, area for the uh, ACF, we see that back in 1939, there were only 76 reservoirs. Then this increased to 174 reservoirs by 1949, a big jump to 458 in 59, and then 778 in 69. This increase uh, then has continued to 1,038 reservoirs in 79 and 1,115 reservoirs in 1989. At present then, we have a large number of reservoirs throughout this basin, 1,129 that are mappable. This suggests then that we have capacity to store water. The difficulty is knowing what the future drought frequency and intensity will be. Climatologists are suggesting that it's very difficult to make these predictions, especially for summertime precipitation. So do we build more small reservoirs? They certainly <clears throat> do provide flood control and reliable water supplies and reduce groundwater pumping and may recharge groundwater as well. But there's an enormous evaporative loss during dry periods and drought and they can fragment and alter flowing water habitats and reduce habitats for some species and increase habitats for others. So the costs and benefits of building more small ponds needs further study, but indeed there are many incentives for these. In the future, we expect that there will be cumulative effects of increased frequencies and durations of drought and greater demands for fresh water could result in the loss for more aquatic biodiversity if environmental flows are not sustained. Clearly, then, we need increased efficiency in water use and effective ways to recharge groundwater to sustain those areas, especially in the southwest part of the state, which have a combination of groundwater and surface water to provide environmental flows and thus protect biodiversity. These kinds of issues, then, in terms of Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, are being considered in great detail. And we can learn uh, how to manage these resources better through looking at other regions and seeing how they come to uh, solutions in terms of uh, multiple state kinds of demands. For example, uh, integrated management of surface water and groundwater storage and groundwater sources have provided regional solutions in meeting water needs in the New York City area as well as in uh, the Delaware River Basin. So by enhancing policies to save and share water regionally by implementing these interstate compacts, we can uh, accelerate considering uh, new solutions by transferring some of the things that have worked in other regions to those in, this, in uh, solving problems in the southeast. We feel then that environmental flows are going to be critical to sustain the biodiversity which will sustain ecosystem services in this region.